good afternoon. Okay, we are going to continue the tutorial nine. Okay, tutorial nine is okay, for your um, subject, the engineering mathematics three. Today, okay, uh, this week is week ten, uh, week ten, and it is left four more weeks. So, okay, um, we are going to look at the questions of the arc length curvature directional derivative. And then take okay, some of the questions. Okay, uh, you can look at uh, watch back the video that has been uh, recorded during the section three tutorial with our author. So today we are going to focus on mainly the curvature at length direction of the two. We may look back question one. Question one. So question one. Um, so we will look to the um. So given the RT equal to A cos Ti plus A sin Tj plus Tk, find velocity velocity vector, acceleration vector AT. Speed, speed is magnitude of log velocity. Unit tangent vector t, 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 and the principal unit normal vector n t. This is the question A is basically we covered back our last week lesson. Start from velocity, acceleration, speed, unit, unit tangent vector, principal unit normal vector. This week we have covered the curvature at length, directional derivative. Basically, uh, basically, this topic is straightforward. What you need to master is your differentiation case skill and the integration skill. Your RT. This notation for vector, it's so easy to write the ijk there. So a cos ti, this is a sin tj, this is t t k. To find velocity, okay. uh, Mohamed Vidal's, Mohamed Vidal's, are you here? Mohammed Vidal's. Hello. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, how to find velocity? Differentiation or integration? Differentiate your RT or integrate RT. How to find velocity? Vt. Just answer me. Differentiate or integrate. We have gone through okay this case, uh question uh, differentiate. Yeah, okay. You, you know. Last week we have gone through the okay, the question velocity acceleration. So given RT to get the velocity, you have to differentiate. Then you have to DDT with RT. So if given RT, uh, if given VT you want to get the position vector RT, then you need to integrate. That's why differentiate A cos T, you have negative A sin T. Differentiate A sin T, you have A cos T. Differentiate B T, you have B. So you get the, okay, the velocity vector. And then to get the acceleration vector. Mohammed uh, such one. Mohammed such one. Ah, to so get acceleration vector, differentiate or integrate. Okay, thank you. So to get acceleration vector, you have to differentiate the Vt. Yes, 
that's why okay, differentiate with differentiate negative a sin t yeah, negative a differentiate sin is positive cos t differentiate cos is negative a sin t differentiate with t you get sin so you get your this is the vt this is your at and then speed is the magnitude of the vt it's the magnitude of vt to get the magnitude of a vector in our big head square root and then square each component sum it up so square the component i here you have the a squared sin squared t Okay, this is also a squared cos squared t, so I have backed up the a squared plus squared t. So in component j, you have a squared cos squared t, where I factor out the a squared. In component k, you squared it, you have b squared. Okay, and then sin squared t plus cos squared t is 1, that's why you get a square root a squared plus b squared. Because A, B is a scalar, okay, we cannot simplify anymore, you just left, left, okay, square root A squared plus B squared, where this is a, okay, a scalar value, not a function of D. Okay, so you have found, okay, the velocity vector VT, acceleration vector AT, speed, and then one unit tangent vector. It unit tangent vector. A unit tangent vector dt is actually your r prime t divided by magnitude r prime t. Okay, where r prime t is actually what? r prime t is a dt, right? Okay. r prime t is dr dt, which is a velocity vector. Okay, and then the magnitude r prime t is actually magnitude of your velocity vector. One velocity, magnitude r prime t or velocity uh, magnitude t is actually with that. T. Negative a sin t a cos t t. So you obtain the uh, unit tangent vector, unit tangent vector, and this is a unit tangent vector dt, and then lastly the, we want to obtain the uh, mt. Yeah? Unit normal vector, unit normal vector is actually t prime t divided by magnitude t prime t. That's why, okay, from the t t, you will go to find, okay, uh, the t prime t is actually you d d t t t. If the magnitude r prime t or velocity k magnitude of vt is a scalar, then you no need to use Gaussian rule because this is constant value. So it just differentiates the numerator respect to t. Denominator here is not it is constant, it's not function of t. So no need to use Gaussian rule. That's why your t prime t it just differentiates the numerator. In ddt negative a sin t, you have negative a cos t at component i, ddt a cos t at negative a, sin t at component j, ddt b is 0, or t prime t is actually given by at. Yeah. 
P prime T is actually the A T. And then, okay, this one, magnitude P prime T. Okay, they have the square root, okay. Numerator here is T prime T. The magnitude of T prime T, you have a square root. And then square each component, sum it. So you have A squared. You have factor out because this one have A squared cos squared T. Component J, when you square it, you got A squared sin squared T. So plus sin squared T. Okay, uh, this one okay, is zero. Simplify it. You get uh, already empty because this is a t prime t this is already magnitude t prime t so to simplify it in a negative a cos t negative a sin t at component j component k is zero so you have a two dimension scape factor cos squared t plus sin squared t is one so you left square root a squared is actually you have a and can they simplify or cancel A at each component? It gets the uh, NT is actually negative cos TI plus negative sin TJ. Okay. So this is question one. Basically, just technique of differentiation. Question one A. So do you have any questions? Question 1a because normally when your magnitude t prime or uh, r prime t is scalar function, then you will think easy to differentiate, should have no problem. So do you have any question on question 1a? No, no. Uh, okay, so mean yeah, Vt okay, is actually, Vt is also the upper T. So the speed also is a magnitude upper T. This is question 1a, this is the last quick content. Okay, this one is question uh, B. Question 1b. Okay, curvature, okay. Oh, curvature of the curve given by RT. So given by RT equal to I plus TJ plus T squared K. So given the RT is, put it in this way, this is 1 T T squared. So it's a K equivalence notation. This represents I plus Tj plus T squared K. Then you find R prime T. One, two, R prime T, DDT RT, DDT 1, 0, DDT T is 1, DDT T squared is 2T. So we so have J plus 2T. And then the following step finds the magnitude of R prime T. So component I K is 0. So component J 1 squared is 1. So 2T squared it. So 4T squared. Okay. So magnitude R prime T here. As I said, this is not a, this one is not a, this function of T. So to find curvature, curvature if the magnitude R prime T is a function of T, it will be easier you find the curvature using the third formula, which is R prime T cross with, okay, cross product with R double prime T divided by magnitude R prime T power 3. So try to do uh, using the third formula first. Okay, so you have R prime T. Okay, magnitude R prime T obtained 
then you just need to find R double prime T. So R double prime T. So DDT R T. So DDT is zero and zero. DDT one is zero. DDT two T you get two. Okay. The fifth step you find the cross product. Cross product K of R prime T cross with R double prime T. This is I, this is J, this is K. Okay, R prime T component I is 0, component J is 1, component K is 2T. R double prime T component I is 0, component J is 0, component K is 2. Okay, so you have 0, a lot of 0 then easy to calculate. Okay, component I. I did so little, although so okay, I'm not sure okay, how to do the so cross product. For component I, you close, okay, you close this one, okay, close this one, then okay, the main K of uh, uh, the main what, uh, product deduct with the other K product. So 2 times 1, so this is 0. Component I, you have 2. Because 1 times 2 is 2 minus K product is 0 and 0. So it's 2 at component I. Later on, component J. Okay, if component J, you get component J, you close it. Okay, and then component J is negative. Because we use k okay, these directions, huh? zero times two is zero. Theta, okay, uh, zero times two t is zero. That's why component j is actually zero. Okay, later on, component k, component k, okay, zero, also zero. So you get k is only the two i. Eh? So your cross product we get is two i, and then okay, so we can find now and find the kappa is a magnitude r prime t cross with r double prime t divided by magnitude r prime. I haven't find the magnitude. So magnitude R prime T cross with R double prime T. Four, which is two. Because I have only component I. 2 squared is 4, and then square root 4, you have okay, magnitude r prime t cross with r double prime t is 2. So 7, then you plug it into the third formula of curvature, okay, which is kappa is magnitude r prime t cross with r double prime t divided by magnitude r prime t power 3. With magnitude r prime t cross with r double prime t obtained, which is 2. Okay, and then find back the so magnitude r prime t, okay, which is from step 3, and then you power 3. Okay, the step 3 is the square root 1 plus 4t squared, and then power 3. Okay, or is 2, 1 plus 4 T squared total is power 3 over 2. Okay, so this one is to find curvature, to find curvature if the magnitude r prime t is function of t will be easier. You use okay, third formula. So do you have okay, any, any questions here? Thank mm -hmm. you.
Hmm. Okay. And then if you want to use second formula, you can see it will be a bit tedious. If we want to use a second formula of the curvature, where the kappa is magnitude d prime t uh, divided by magnitude r prime t. Okay. Second formula. This one will be a bit of tedious, especially if the magnitude r prime t is function of t, because you need to use quotient rule to find the uh, t prime t. This will find back the formula. The r prime t, this one will change to this notation, 1 t t squared. So ddt r t, ddt 1 is 0, ddt t is 1, ddt t squared is 2 t. And then a uh, magnitude one plus four t squared. Okay. So the t t is r prime t divided by magnitude r prime t. So this zero. 1, 2t. Square root 1 plus 4t squared. Okay, if we use okay, this notation, okay, if any component is 0, you must okay, uh, write down. For example, here this is 0i plus j plus 2t. But if we use a ijk notation, you can just write this is j plus 2tk. Okay, but if component i here is 0, uh, don't eliminate. Uh. If you just put 1 t in it, it will become i plus 2 t j. Okay. So now, okay, if, you, if you want to use the second formula, then okay, when you want to find t prime t, denominator here is function of t, so you have a bit tedious to do so. Uh, differentiation because you have the form of u over b u over b so then state your t prime t with t prime t you have to the formula is v u prime minus uh, u v prime divided by v squared So v is the square root 1 plus 4t squared. Okay, u prime with ddt, ddt 0i, 1j, 2t, okay. k. Minus u, u is 0i, 1j, 2t, k. Okay, and then you ddt square root 1 plus 4 Square. So it will be a bit okay, tedious, okay, especially if the magnitude of prime t is not a uh, scalar value. So p squared so will become uh, no more square root. Because we get 1, 1 plus 4 t squared. Plus square root k okay, one plus four t squared. Okay, differentiation a vector. You can put k. Okay, the result still vector. So d d t zero yeah, zero d d t one yeah, zero d d t two t is 
two. So this is the third zero one, two t and component k. Okay, ddt square root one plus four t squared. We have half, and then one plus four t squared power k. Uh, square root is power half. Differentiation power half minus one to so become minus. Okay, and then you have the ddt 1 plus 4t squared where you get, which is 8t. So you a bit tedious here in uh, doing so your numerator here. And then... Um, here is actually i component i zero component j zero and this is actually from component k. Okay. Let me put it this way. Turn it to one plus four t squared. Okay, this is two. This is at component. Okay. So in this notation. The first k component. 0i, 0j, and then 2 times square root 1 plus 4t squared. Okay, this one you can simplify. This is 2 times 1, 2 times 4t. So you have is actually 0, 1, 2t. This is vector. And then uh, you have numerator here. 2 and 8t, you simplify, you have 4t. Okay, power negative half. Bring, bring down become 1 plus 4 d squared. So it's tedious and longer. Divide by 1 plus 4 d squared. Okay. So this one, you have the square root okay, here at denominator. Then this one to make, to combine these two, uh, Vector. So here, if I divide by square root 1 plus 4t squared, I have to multiply by square root 1 plus 4t squared. So it cancels each other, still balance. Okay, so now we have plus 0. Okay, and anything is still 0. We component i and j 0. Component k in the first k factor, 2, okay, uh, square root, square root, so we left 2 times 1 plus 4 t squared. So now we have to divide by square root 1 plus 4 t squared. Okay. And then uh, here, see, okay, component i 0 times anything 0, okay, component j, okay, 1 times 4 t, so up here. This is 4t, okay, I can combine, actually, this one I can combine, they yeah, are denominator, cost 0, but anything you still get 0. So 2t times 4t, you have 8t squared at component k. Square root 1 plus 4t squared. Okay, divide again, okay, divide again. We divide this time 1 over 1 plus 4 d squared. That's why now we can combine okay, these two vector and denominator. Component i, 0 minus 0, we have 0. Component j, 0 minus 40, we have negative 40. Okay. And then this one, uh, denominator is actually we combine together. Square, k okay, square root is power half times the power 1, so total is 1 plus 4t squared power 3 over 2. Okay. And then component k here, 2. 2 plus 8t squared minus 8t squared 
He just left. You get so uh, this is T prime T. T prime T, where you obtain exactly negative 4 T J plus 2 K. This one is a T prime T. Yeah? So it's very long K, uh, long K to differentiate if your magnitude R prime T is a is function of t, t prime t you obtain is here. Okay, and then so your uh, magnitude t prime t with the square root. Okay, component i zero and then component k j you square it so sixteen t squared component k you square it this will be 4 okay, so denominator square it yeah, 1 plus 4 t squared power 3 okay, so try to simplify the numerator factor out 4 so this is 4 t squared plus 1, it divided by 1 plus 4 t squared power 3. So this one, this one can become power 2. So now we have left square root 4 divided by 1 plus 4 t squared power 2, okay, or 2 over 1 plus 4 t squared. So you obtain the so magnitude t prime t. And in this case, the kappa using the second formula is actually magnitude t prime t divided by magnitude r prime t. So magnitude t prime t that you obtain is 2 over 1 plus 4 t squared. Magnitude R prime T, the that was a magnitude R prime T, is a okay. square root 1 plus 4 T squared. Eh? Is square root 1 plus 4 T squared. So it's actually 2 divided 1 plus 4 T squared. Okay. This square root, so it's actually 1 plus 4 T squared power half. Then you get 2 over 1 plus 4 T squared power 3 over 2. Let's check it what you obtain using the third formula will be easier. 2 over 1 plus 4 T squared power 3 over 2. So you can see that If the magnitude of prime t is a function of t, then it will face k or a bit longer to find the uh, t prime t because t t is r prime t divided by magnitude r prime t. Then now you need to differentiate using quotient rule. So to simplify your t prime t, oh, see the whole page, almost one page. And then you find the magnitude t prime t. Lastly, the kappa using the second formula is magnitude t prime t divided by magnitude r prime t. So I would suggest okay, if the magnitude r prime t is function of t, then you use the third formula of curvature, which is magnitude r prime t cross r double prime t divided by magnitude r prime t power 3. This one provided you find okay, your cross product correctly. Yeah? So do you have any questions okay, on finding the curvature? Now we have shown using two formula. Uh, 
Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it the question will uh, ask us to do using formula, the third formula or second formula? Uh, no. Uh, okay. Thank you. Mm. If but uh, if the question is in term of s, then you use the first formula. Let me do uh, t prime s. In case, like this one is given in RT. So if you see this one, magnitude R prime T is function of T, then use the third formula faster and easy. Okay, but if the magnitude R prime T is a scalar value, then you use it, you can use the second formula. Or you want to use a third, also can. No problem. Okay, and for example, okay, I'll put that. We will complete first question 1c and then we look at uh, one question where the r is in terms of r length s, then you use the first formula. We find the r length of the curve given by r t. We'll put to this notation for cos ti for sin tj plus 3tk. With the find at length, you find r prime t. So r prime t, ddt4 cos t negative 4 sin t. ddt4 sin t, you get 4 cos t. ddt3 t, you get 3. And then you find magnitude R prime T. Square each component. So for uh, negative 4, sin T you square, you get 16. And this also 16, I factor up. First term, K you got 16, sin square T. Component J, you square it, 16, cos square T. So I factor up 16. And then nine, uh, 3 you square it with 9. And then sin squared t plus cos squared t, you know, is 1. So total we have square root 25, which is 5. Okay. And then the arc length is the, the integral of magnitude r prime t dt. Then from 0 to pi over 2. So t from 0 to pi over 2. Then just integrate pi dt from 0 to pi over 2. So have pi t 0 to pi over 2. I get pi pi over two. So at length is straightforward. Okay, at length is it given by integral of magnitude r prime t dt. So t from where to where look at the equation is from zero to pi over two. So at length will be easy now. Okay, we just try r prime t, magnitude r prime t, put up with the arc length formula, which is the integral of magnitude r prime t dt, the t in this equation from 0 to pi over 2. Okay, so any question k to find the arc length. And somehow if you place k difficult integral, just use a calculator. So of course calculator in a protein is a uh, the variable k, the integral is in terms of x. So, any questions here for at length? Okay, no. No. Okay. So, your, I think your test 2, okay, mm. the covered start for multiple integration, vector value function, uh, still up to the big 12 contents. The chapter four. Okay. okay. 
okay question two you may watch back okay, on the video okay that have been recorded okay, during the section three tutorial on the author you can look at the second video then okay in the author the last week i have mentioned the tutorial oh, but the curvature, curvature okay, i just found this two not curvature like this computer for your exercise. Cover this two first. Directional derivative. Then you got time, then we move back. Okay. Find the directional derivative. This one is a straightforward given the unit vector u. Okay, so directional derivative we have okay. Directional derivative at the point one zero. At the point one zero. So it's a gradient vector. With the nabla f at the point one zero dot with the unit vector, where the gradient vector, gradient vector, so vector is component okay, i is a okay, since this is a two dimensions, okay, your gradient vector this is a fx at the point one zero, and then fy at the point one zero dot with the unit vector. Okay, this question, unit vector is okay, right, nice, given directly. If given vector A, then to, you have to change it to unit vector, where the vector A divided by magnitude vector A. Okay, if given P to Q, then you find vector PQ, and then take vector PQ divided by magnitude vector PQ. If they say the uh, unit vector making an angle, okay, let's say, theta with positive R, uh, x uh, with the positive x axis then the so component i is a cos theta i component j is a sin theta j okay and then you um, yeah there is a it making angle the u is cos theta i plus sin theta j so this one is direct from scale you need to from f x y you need to find f x then evaluate it at the point one zero Find the so Fy, develop it at the point one zero. Okay, so it finds subtraction, it finds the uh, F X. Uh, F, so subscript, uh, F subscript, I don't write big, this is at the bottom, subscript, okay. F X is actually the del del X. This is called del, this is not blood. And Google up and A B L A. Okay, this one is called D E L Del. Okay. This symbol is called Delta. Okay. So Del Del X X exponent Y minus Y exponent X. So when delta x y is constant, it y is constant. That's why you have exponent y okay, delta x x okay, minus y delta x exponent x. So you have exponent y okay, minus y exponent x. Okay, for f x we obtain is Exponent y minus y exponent x because the other x exponent x you get exponent x. It evaluate it at the point one zero. So your f x one zero. Okay. Substitute y by zero exponent zero. Okay, y zero. Everything zero. That's why right. the answer is exponent zero is one because. Zero times anything we have zero. Okay, and then you find f y. 
f y exactly del del x del 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 y if f y is del del y x exponent y minus y exponent x It, when delta y x is constant, so x here is factor of x, and then you delta y exponent y. Okay. So factor of exponent x, and then you delta y y. Okay. Delta y exponent y, you have exponent y. Okay. Delta y y is 1, so you have x exponent y minus exponent x. Okay, evaluate it at the point 1, 0. So, f, y, 1, 0. Okay, x is 1, okay, time, exponent 0, okay, uh, x is 1. x is 1, y is 0, exponent 0 is 1, so 1. Okay, minus exponent 1. Okay. So therefore, your gradient vector, del f, 1, 0, okay, you have at the fx, 1, 0, and then fy, 1, 0. One, mean 1, i, this is 1 minus exponent 1. G. Okay, and then the directional derivative dq okay, at the point um, one zero with the b shop del f one zero dot a unit factor one to one minus exponent one dot with the q If u is 1 over 2, 1 over 2. 1 over 2 i, 1 over 2 j. Then you just left finding the dot product. Okay. Finding the dot product, if you take component i times i, j times a. And then i dot i, 1, j dot j, 1. So, yeah. 1 over set 2 okay, plus 1 minus exponent 1 divided by set 2. Okay. It combines the denominator, so set 2. So 1 plus 1, so 2 minus exponent 1 set 2. Two minus exponent one divided by set two. So this is a directional derivative. Okay. Do you have any questions? Put the F. Okay, any question on the directional derivative? No. No. Question two. Can you find a unit? in the direction in which the function f below increase most rapidly. We want direction. Increase most rapidly. The direction we increase most rapidly is given by direction of gradient vector. So it means the answer is actually it is a gradient vector. Not like f at the point negative one one one. 
okay, if the function is three dimension, then the gradient vector will be in three dimension, which is this is a fx, i, f, y, j, f, z, k, uh, and then at the point. Evaluate at the point negative one, one, one. So fx at the point negative one, one. Okay, and then the fy at the point negative one, one, one. And then the fz at the point negative one, one, one. So okay, a unit vector. Okay, do you want unit vector? Then the, you have to use a gradient vector divided by magnitude of the gradient vector. Okay. And then bring the answer to be like this. In the fx, negative 1, 1. 1 here, square it plus fy at the point negative 1, 1, 1, click square it plus hit fz at the point negative 1, 1, 1, square it. Okay, the answer, because they want a unit vector in the direction in which the function f increase most rapidly is actually given by gradient vector. Okay. If, if they want unit vector, then they will divide by magnitude of that gradient vector. Okay. And the gradient vector, if f is three dimensions, the gradient vector is also three dimensions, where the component i is actually fx. At the point negative right. one, one, one. Component J is Fy. Component Z, uh, component K is Fz. So divide by magnitude of gradient vector. Okay, Hans K, you need to find so the Fx, Fy, Fz. Evaluate it at the point negative one, one, one. Put it into the vector form, and then find the magnitude. Means you have to find Fx. So it's del del x, x over z plus 1 over y. Okay. So when you del del x, y and z are actually constant. So for the first term, you have 1 over z, del del x, x. So del del x, okay, 1 over y, the answer is 0 because y is constant. So fx will get 1 over z. If fy is del del y x over z plus 1 over y. Okay. When, when you del del y x and z are constant. So differentiate a constant you have 0. So delta y, 1 over y, we have negative y, because this one is y power negative 1. Eh? So have negative y power negative 2. Okay. And then to so find the so fz. Okay, fz is the delta z where x and y are constant. So x is constant, that's why I have x, delta z, 1 over z. Delta z, 1 over y, this is constant, that's why it's 0. This one here. Delta z, 1 over z, you have negative, uh, negative z power negative 2. Z power negative 2, similar to here. Z power negative 1. Okay, and then you evaluate it at the point negative 1, 1, 1. Z okay, is 1, so that's why we have 1. 
So f y negative one one one. If y is one, so negative one. Okay. F z negative one one one. If x is negative one. It's actually negative x over z squared. If x negative 1, if z squared is 1, so answer is 1. Okay. Once take the gradient vector, del f negative 1, 1, 1, okay. the dk from component fx is 1, fy is Negative 1, fz is 1. Okay, and then you find the magnitude of gradient vector. So it's 1 plus 1 plus 1. 1 squared is 1, negative 1 squared is 1, 1 squared is 1, so is 3. So the answer is actually the direction, okay, a unit vector which gives the direction where the function increase the most rapidly is actually the gradient vector divided by its magnitude. The unique factor which gives direction where the function f increases the most rapidly is uh, at the point at the point one negative one one. Okay, this is your gradient vector. Not log f negative one one one. Divided by magnitude gradient vector. So your gradient vector that you obtain is if i minus j plus k. So the magnitude is set three. So this is the answer. So only what you want is only direction. Okay. So find a unit vector, which is a gradient vector divided by magnitude gradient vector. Okay, and the part two, find the rate of change of f in direct direction. Okay, the rate of change in the direction means the direction increase most rapidly. Okay, the rate of change in the direction is actually magnitude of this is actually magnitude of the gradient vector, which is three. So this is okay, the directional derivative with the gradient vector and uh, the direction where the function f increased the most rapidly and the rate of the function the rate of maximum increase of function f. So do you have any questions? No. The, uh, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
ask you what is a What is the direction? Mm, what is the direction? Where? Where? Decrease. Decrease. So what is the direction where the function f decreases the most? That's the direction. Okay, where is the direction? Where the function f will decrease the most? Okay, where is the direction? I'm not okay. No more. I'm not. Straight and then left already. Okay, zero masana. Okay, where is the direction where F decrease the most? Zero masana, are you around? Yes, okay. Yeah, so where is the direction where the function F decrease the most? Negative one not la. Okay. Okay, negative uh, if the same point mean is negative of this one negative of the gradient vector and the answer is you just put up negative of the maximum k direction okay. thank you okay. negative of this answer so means negative i positive j and then okay, what is the minimum value of directional derivative? So what's the minimum value of directional Okay, the question is what is the minimum value of directional derivative at let's say the same point one negative one one Mohammad Shawa as Nawi. Mohammad Shawa as Nawi. What? Uh, what is the minimum value of directional derivative at the point one, negative one, and one? Mm -hmm. Okay, what's the value? Okay, if you listen to the lecture, okay, then you know. What's the okay, what is the minimum value of directional derivative? Or what is the maximum decrease? The equivalent question is actually what is the maximum decrease? Mm -hmm. Minimum value okay, or equivalent is say maximum decrease. Huh? Maximum decrease of the function f at the point 1, negative 1, 1. Mm -hmm. okay. Do you listen to the lecture last night? Uh. 
uh, the last the last man the the last that takes to and and about about it to the the last the last the last the last part the last the last the last part 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 the this is it. The last part yesterday we said the we directional derivative uh using the what, uh, the gradient vector gradient vector and we said the gradient vector will give you the direction where it's a maximum increase maximum increase and then the negative of gradient vector give you give you the maximum decrease uh, or mean. Come back with this uh, last night. All the question that we ask is basically based on the lecture only. So if I ask back, you cannot answer. Mean you are not listening. Property of the gradient. The direction of maximum increase of f is given by direction of gradient vector. But the question one they use a unit vector that's why we need to divide by magnitude of gradient vector so the maximum value of directional derivative okay, or equivalent is maximum rate of increase of f if you want the magnitude that's why it's magnitude of gradient vector okay and here direction of maximum decrease Maximum decrease is given by negative of gradient vector. The minimum value of directional derivative or the maximum rate of decrease is given by negative of gradient vector. Okay, and why we get number two, item two to five based on here directional derivative using the gradient vector. This is a Gradient vector, nabla f x y dot q. Okay, u is a unit vector using property of dot product. Okay, we have the magnitude of gradient vector multiply magnitude of u cos theta. Okay, u is a unit vector. The magnitude is one unit. That's why we left cos theta. Okay, cos theta the value okay range from negative one to positive one. So that's why maximum value happen when cos theta is 1 happen and when theta equal to 0. When theta 0, cos 0 is 1. That's why the maximum value for your directional derivative is the magnitude of the gradient vector. Okay, And the minimum value is negative 1 happen when theta is 5. That's why the minimum value of directional derivative is actually negative magnitude of the gradient vector. Okay. We have covered it last night. If you to listen carefully, mm -hmm. then you should understand. Okay, the minimum value of direction derivative of equivalence, equivalence is, is what we said maximum rate of decrease. Okay, that's why uh, this one, what's the minimum value of direction derivative of what's the maximum decrease of F it's actually you just take negative the negative of set three. The answer is negative of set three. If you want the direction, okay, where's the direction where the f decreased the most? Negative of okay, gradient vector. Negative of this one. Okay. Then you have okay. Because if I'm not asking unit vector, I just take the negative of gradient vector. So it's a negative, it's a positive negative. This is negative, this is positive, this is negative. Because this one, if they're only asking direction, so you can give vector. If they want unit vector, then you divide by the magnitude of the gradient vector. So this is basically the content of it last night. So we have okay, directional derivative. So make sure you okay, your answer here are uh, your 
recall back and then look back the lecture notes there. If it is not enough uh, question, you can look at the module. And the test is not only up to here, but up to okay, the week 12 contents. So we look at this one as I said just now where the curvature in terms of S. Huh? In question 6, so that curvature of circle of radius is 1 over R. Okay, yesterday, okay, the second example, we have shown this one. Ah, here. Question 5C. Find the curvature of the line RS. Okay, this is like the first K example yesterday. Curvature. First example of curvature where if R in terms of S is okay, this one, this is actually the straight line. Question 5C. Okay. Um, so if R given in terms of S, then we use the first formula to find the curvature. Mean S here, S here is actually the arc length param parameter. Okay. So R either in terms of R, R, T or S. Huh? So we can get the parametric equation, component i, you let it equal to x. So x equal to at least 2 minus 6s. So y equal to 8, 3s. Okay, this is a parametric equation of straight line. This is straight line in 2D because our okay, vector is only IJ, so it's 2D in two dimension. So we call back the parametric equations. Huh? In the okay, uh, last week, we scrap the graph of RT is 3 minus TI plus 2TJ plus 4 plus 3TK. So this is in terms of T. If T, I change to S. So X is 3 minus S. Y is 2, 2S. Z is 4 plus 4S. Okay, this is actually... We have the parametric equation x equal to x0 plus a t. t here can change it to s, doesn't matter. So mean the parametric equation is either in our t or s is just variable only. So when you see as long as you have here x equal to x0 plus a t or a s, y equal to y0 plus b t or b s, z equal to z0 plus c t or c s. Huh? So this one I know this is a straight line. Because this straight line passing through the point x node, y node, z node, and parallel with a vector a i plus b t plus uh, sorry a i plus b j plus c k. That's why this one is similarly. This straight line passes through. It passes through. Okay, x is 2, uh, so passing through x equal to 2, okay, this is 3s, so mean 3s plus 0, so y is 0. And parallel with vector v, which is okay, negative 6s, so it's become negative 6i plus 3s second plus 3j. So this is a straight line equation 
passing through the point 2, 0, parallel, parallel refractor, negative 6i plus 3j. Okay, and if straight line, the arc length should be 0 because straight up, no curve at all. And then, okay, the, to find the arc length are uh, the curvature where the R in terms of S, so it's given by magnitude T times S. So I put the, this notation 2 minus 6 S, 3 S. Uh, and you find R prime S. This is recall that for UK this equation represents the parametric equation of straight line. This passes through the point 2, 0 parallel with vector negative 6i plus 3j. So you find r prime s in dds. Huh? So you have negative 6 dds 3s, you have 3. Okay, and then you find, okay, so this is number 1, number 2, you find magnitude r prime s. So magnitude of a vector, each component you square it, so you have 36. 3, you square it, 9, so you get square root 45, and then you find Ts. Ts will be R prime S divided by magnitude R prime S. Divided by magnitude R prime S. So we did. Negative 6i plus 3j divided by square root 45. Okay. And then curvature is given by magnitude t prime s. This is the first formula for curvature. Curvature is actually uh, to define magnitude t prime m first. Huh? t prime s. Okay. ts is in k constant. That's why t prime s is actually you have 0i, 0j. And then kappa is actually magnitude t prime s to the b 0. Because okay, this is a straight line. Okay, curvature of a straight line is 0. This one similar to last night, the Similar. This one, the first example of curvature yesterday. Okay, so do you have any, uh, any more questions on this tutorial line? You said that you uh, you and I don't know if you still know some other T at the S again. Um, so I don't know if you can do it to any side of my answer to R, some other RT at the RS again. Yeah, RT at the RS again. Well, if you have R in terms of S, then you can have curvature, yeah, la, magnitude P prime S. Well, if you have R okay, in terms of at length parameter, then curvature ialah magnitude t prime s. Okay, kemudian kalau dia bagi a, okay, function of t. The second example ini uh, um, curvature of circle. Okay, a in term of t theta, and then theta between in term of s. Okay, if normally they give you vector by the function in term of t time t. Then the curvature you need to find either using this, this formula, magnitude t prime t divided by magnitude r prime t, or 
the third formula, magnitude r prime t cross with r double prime t divided by magnitude r prime t power 3. You use a third formula if magnitude r prime t is function of t. Okay. If magnitude r prime t is a, a scalar, uh, you can use the second. No problem. Or you want to use the third also can. Provided, okay. If you want to use a third formula, provided you do your cross product have, uh, correctly. Not. So this is the curvature 3 formula there. Okay, also curvature, I think we are not sure us in final of test 2, not sure, but will be asked. Directional derivative also. Okay, so still any more questions? Okay, any more questions? Not that there. No, you still have about, I think, 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Okay, I want you to do uh, question 2, C and D. C and D. Okay, and then I'm going to create in the author, submit to the, okay, uh, submit to, this, to the individual activity. Question 2C and 2D. Submit by 6 p.m. Okay, and the rest of the question, I think mostly have been, um, so you do C and D. The rest, you can look back, watch back. If your, your, your section 3, 4 have been done. And then some of the questions you can watch back okay, the video recorded last Thursday. Okay, so now okay, I want you to do questions okay, to C and D. Submit to the author by 6 p.m. Okay.